Dublin Castle, as more than 100,000 people queue in the cold to pay their last respects to their late president, Erskine Hamilton Childers. He lies in state in St. Patrick's Hall, as the people of Ireland he loves so well file past. Ambassadors and other VIPs stand behind the coffin to pay a last silent farewell to a revered statesman. Ireland and the whole world mourn the passing of a president and a friend. At St. Patrick's Cathedral, foreign dignitaries arrive for the service of thanksgiving. Britain's Prime Minister, Harold Wilson. Leader of the opposition, Edward Heath. The Catholic Archbishop of Dublin and the Papal Nuncio. Mrs. Childers, daughter Nessa and stepson Erskine B. Childers. The coffin is carried from the cathedral by an army bearer party after a service in which the 15th century prayer spoken by the late president at his inauguration service here in St. Patrick's a short 17 months ago were recalled. God be in my head and in my understanding. God be in my eyes and in my looking. God be in my mouth and in my speaking. A 21-gun salute is fired as the funeral procession moves off. King Baudouin of Belgium with the Archbishop of Dublin, Dr. Alan Buchanan. Lord Mountbatten. Former President de Valera. As the procession makes its way towards Merrion Square, the entire city of Dublin observes a national day of mourning. Schools and businesses are closed, and the industrial, commercial and social life of the country comes to a complete standstill. President Erskine Childers was a man of the people who identified himself with the hopes and fears of all men, whatever their station, and dedicated himself to their service. Mrs. Childers and family in the funeral procession. Former President de Valera. The burial takes place in the humble churchyard of Dera Lossary in County Wicklow. At the last rites, Mrs. Childers and family stand at the graveside. The boasts of heraldry, the pomp of power, no longer relevant at the inevitable hour. As a man, he never spoke a word in anger. As an Irishman, he tried to bring all Irishmen together as one people, regardless of religion or other allegiances. As a statesman, he sought peace for all men throughout the world. 